Hey guys, Rob with Team Align and Enterprise Hobby here. And I'm just going to be doing a brief video on how to convert your DFC model Nitro helicopter to the standard 700 fly barless rotor head. Um, the kit comes with pretty much everything. You will need to purchase separately the 700 FL main shaft. All right, that part number is H70H003XXT. And the part number for this conversion kit is h 70 H002XXT. So let me show you everything that comes in the conversion kit. You do get your standard fly barless head block with the integrated swash driver, and it does come with a new set of dampeners pre installed into the head block. You get your red main blade links, these are going to attach to your main grips that you are going to salvage off your DFC helicopter. You do get your new swash plate, the red and silver swash plate. Um, I do recommend just unscrewing all the balls on this swash plate and on your main blade links and just reapplying your preferred form of Loctite. Me personally, I do use red. And then you get your standard bags of hardware. This is going to have your screws that are required for the washout, arms that are going to go into the base of the head block All right, for that integrated swash driver. You're gonna get your screws for your head block here that are gonna thread into the main shaft, and then also your Jesus bolt with the nut. These are going to be your new links that you're gonna be using. Um, these are going to drive the swash plate um, pretty much from your main, main blade grips. And you get a bunch of extra links in here if you wanna change over the rest of your helicopter. Um, you'll get the black links with the little red accents on it. All right. And you also get a new pack of linkage balls. The longer linkage ball here. This one you'd be using if you were converting your 700E DFC. For the Nitro, we're going to just be using the three standard size ball links. Um, what you'll need from your 700 Nitro DFC is you are going to need your standard blade grips, okay? Just remove the linkage arms that were already on it, as you will no longer be using those. You will also need a feathering shaft. You could either use a brand new one, or if your used one is in good shape, you could still go ahead and just use that in the helicopter. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Um, pretty much that is all you're going to need, along with the screws, obviously, for your... Um, for your feathering shaft and then the two washers that go in between your bearing and the DFC and the dampener on the head block. All right. So let's get started here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply Loctite onto the linkage balls for the swash plate. So we'll go ahead and we'll just get all these unscrewed here quickly. As you can see, there is a little bit of Loctite on there. But I do recommend just disassembling it just for safe measure. So we'll go ahead, we'll do this quickly. And like I said earlier, I do prefer to use red Loctite um, on everything on the head. Just peace of mind for me. If you don't feel comfortable with it, um, you know, you could sometimes have issues getting pieces apart. Um, heat does help very well. So I do recommend that if you do wanna go the red Loctite route, like I've chosen to do. Um, when you re-thread some of these balls back in, you wanna make sure that you're gonna be getting on the innermost hole here, all right? So go ahead and start threading that in. Okay, go ahead and do the second one here. All right, I'll go ahead and finish this up, and when we come back, we'll uh, start getting on to the head. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get the main rotor housing attached with your feathering shaft and main grips that uh, you have taken off your DFC model. So I've already gone ahead and got my feathering shaft through one side of my blade grip here. All right. Um, like I said before, you are going to need these small washers that also were on your old head. So what you'll want to do is get this partially assembled, get that washer on there. 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna just hold it by this bolt that I've somewhat threaded in here and get this pushed through to our main rotor head block. All right, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and install the second washer on the opposite side. And then we are going to take our other main blade grip and get this assembled here. Go ahead, push this through like that. So now we have pretty much everything together here. I've already applied some Loctite to the other side of this head just to get the bolt started. I'm going to apply a little more Loctite now to the other side and get this side threaded on here. All right, so once this is all done, just tighten down on this. You really don't have to go too tight. Just pretty much as tight as you think you can by hand. All right, so now the majority of your head is set. You do wanna make sure that everything is rotating freely. Um, one other suggestion I might add is if you are converting your DFC model over to this head, while you have the head apart, inspect your thrust bearings for grease and for any sort of damage. And at that point, that would be a good time to go ahead and start replacing them. All right, so now we have the head together. What I'm actually going to do is just get the main shaft all set up here. Um, so what you'll want to do is throw the swash plate onto your main shaft. Go ahead and get this positioned up into the main rotor housing. All right, you are going to have three holes here, okay? You're gonna have the standard hole where your Jesus bolt is gonna go into, and then you're gonna have your two additional head block screws that you are going to lock tight into the actual main rotor housing here, okay? So we'll get this started here, and we will start off by putting through the standard Jesus bolt, get that all lined up there, pop that through the hole, I'll come out the other side just get this thread started all right i do like to get the two other accessory bolts here loctited first before i actually clamp down on the jesus bolt all right so in the kit a line actually does provide two new screws for you here all right so these are going to be m4 by eight millimeter so we'll go ahead and get some Loctite on these guys. Get this started up in the head here. Just like that. Get the other one, get some Loctite on it. Okay. Go ahead and grab your three millimeter Allen wrench. Start cranking down on those. Again, you don't have to go too tight. You know, you don't want to be stripping anything out. Just enough that where you feel everything grab and it starts to feel secure. So now we'll also go ahead and tighten up our regular Jesus bolt here up top. Let's grab a set of small needle nose pliers. Usually I just push the actual nut up against the housing. Grab that from this side here. Kind of just hold it like this so it doesn't start to slip on you. Just come from the top and just start cranking down on your Jesus bolt. And this you want to get relatively tight, pretty much as tight as you possibly can. All right. So now for the most part, our head is just about ready to go. We have to go ahead and add on our main grip links here. So we'll do that in the next segment. Okay, for this next step, we are going to need your red grip arms that are going to attach to your main blade grips. Um, I've gone ahead and removed the ball links, applied some more Loctite, 
got those pretty tight. Um, these grip arms are aluminum, so you do not want to go too tight because you will strip it out. Um, and that will be very hard to fix. The threads are very small, so to even get a Healy coil in there, it's just not really gonna wanna work. So you do have to be relatively cautious with those. All right, so we'll go ahead here. You are going to need the four screws that came in the kit. They are M3 by six. There's only four of them in the kit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and apply some Loctite. Get one of these in the grip arms here. Go ahead, grab our Allen wrench. Just get these started a little bit. The same thing goes for as you're threading them into your actual main blade grip. You do not want to go too tight, just tight enough. Um, the grips are aluminum as well, so you don't want to go too tight. If you strip those out, you're going to have a, an issue. So I'm going to go just tight enough where it feels very snug. Okay, so that side's done. We'll go ahead and flip over to gain access to the other side. We're gonna repeat the process on this side as well. Again, just, you wanna just get it started. You don't wanna just start cranking down on one and not the other, because if it's not seated properly on the uh, main blade grip, you don't want that. So we'll get both our screws in there. Start screwing them down evenly. Get it nice and snug. Tighten all those all up. Okay. So that's it for that. Next step, we will be getting your follower arms onto the actual headlock. All right, so on to the next step. We're gonna go ahead and be installing the actual metal washout control arms to the bottom of the head block. Um, so included in the kit were two M3 by 16 socket screws along with two very, very small washers. So what you're gonna wanna do is um, at this point, if you haven't done so already, um, I did remove both of these screws and I reapply Loctite on both of the washout arms. So I would advise just to do that as well, just for safe measure. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do now is put that small washer onto the screw. We are going to put the screw through the actual washout arm itself. I'm going to apply a little bit of Loctite. Go ahead and get this started into the actual head block itself. All right, um, and for these washout arms, you really don't have to go too tight. These arms are, these screws are not gonna go all the way through the head block to the other side. Um, so you are just securing the actual washout arm itself. Um, this screw in no way, shape or form is securing the head block at all. So you don't have to go crazy when you start to tighten up this screw, okay? Again, same thing applies here. You know, you are screwing into aluminum. You don't wanna to screw too tight. So we have our one arm threaded on here. Flip it over and we're gonna do the same with the other side. All right. Apply some Loctite. Start threading that into the bottom of the head block. Get that threaded on there nice and snug. Just enough torque. Okay, so now our washout arms are in place. I'm not gonna bother hooking it up to the swash just yet. Um, we'll go ahead and we will get the 
actual links and everything all set for the head at least a good starting point per the manual um, I believe for the nitro if I'm not mistaken um, it should be about 50 millimeters or so I will confirm that before we start uh, threading those links on okay all right so the head is pretty much ready to go at this point I did just go ahead and throw on the linkage rods um, I didn't measure it out at this point um, you will have to adjust your fly barless system possibly um, and she either shorten or lengthen the links as desired to uh, achieve zero pitch at mid stick with your washout arms at 50% on the head. Next step, we're gonna just see how it looks on the helicopter. All right guys, head is all set up, ready to go. I've uh, gone ahead and repitched my whole setup, getting zero pitch at mid stick. Um, in order to do that with the fly barless head system here with the swash drivers, you'll wanna set up your fly barless unit so you can either raise or lower your swash in order to get the washout arms here 90 degrees to your main shaft um, that would be the best position for you to have your zero pitch setting at and then go ahead and adjust your linkages as needed to either gain more uh, negative or positive collective if you guys have any questions feel free to ask thanks